Hello and welcome everyone to CAFE. I'm Crystal Candy. And I'm Clarence Reynolds. It is great to be back with you to share all of the fun and exciting events happening this week. There's always something fun and exciting at the Orlando Science yes. Center and their new exhibit, Life is No Exception. We had a chance to check it out, so take a look. Life exhibit at the Orlando Science Center. It is the largest and most comprehensive exhibit that they have ever attempted. And it tells the story of our planet through the animals who inhabit it in three different ecosystems. And to tell us more about the animal story is Jenny Bowles, who is the animal care manager here at the Orlando Science Center. And we are here now in the swamp. Of course, we're in Florida, so we know right. what goes with the swamp. We've got alligators, we've got turtles. Tell us what people can expect here in the swamp. Yeah, so the life exhibit has three separate areas. We have the swamp, the ocean, and the rainforest. But the really great part about the swamp is it allows you to get closer to the wildlife that's in your own backyard here in Florida that is there, but you might not be completely aware of learning more about them and what role we play in making sure that they're taken care of in our backyards. So in the swamp, we've got, you know, the superstars. You've got to have some alligators and yes, turtles. Yes. What else can people see here in the swamp, which we, is very unique? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So we have five gators that are in our gator pool here. We also have five different species of aquatic turtles, including one very large uh, snapping turtle, um, red-eared sliders, yellow-bellied sliders, um, all cohabitating together so that you can see how they would work together in an actual environment out in the wild. Yeah, I, I noticed earlier I saw an alligator under the heat lamp on top of a turtle. Yes. I've never seen that before, but that's nope. what you're going to see here. They stack, <laughs> they share food, um, definitely moving around exactly like they would in the wild is exactly what you're going to experience here. And we make sure that all of their needs are provided. You're seeing their heat lamps, their UV lamps, because they're obviously not getting that direct sunlight in here like they would outside. Yeah. So everything's provided and you get to see how they would normally behave. You've done a great job. And then the squirrels, we experience squirrels in different ways here in Florida. Correct. You have something very unique and special with that exhibit. We do. Um, so we have two squirrels that are over here. The squirrels are actually the only animal here that are not native to Florida. They are native to islands that are off the coast of China. Um, they are called Prevost squirrels. But we have an entire system that runs above your head so those squirrels can be running around. You can see how quick they are. You can see the way that they move. You can watch out for other things that they do. Um, <laughs> but it's a really interactive exhibit. It's a lot of fun to see how they, they move through things. And then around the corner from the squirrels, we also have the very mysterious owls. Burrowing owls, yep. Another animal that you can find in your backyard. But they actually, they're one of the most Fascinating animals to me because you can find them in super cold temperatures. They can thrive in really hot temperatures. So they do perfectly all over Florida, um, but they actually do burrow into the ground and they live here in like the grassy land areas of Florida. Yes, yeah, so we have two of them over there. That's fascinating. Yeah. And you normally can't get up close like that with owls. If that's you really cannot, cool. no. Um, so those are animals that are really reclusive. They keep to themselves. Um, so to be able to see them and then get that close to them and how they work, it's, it's pretty fascinating. Awesome. Yeah. So, why don't we go get up close with some more um, creatures sounds good. in the ocean? So we're <laughs> yeah. going to go to the okay. ocean now. We are now here in the ocean, and I love the fact, Jenny, that when you walk into this exhibit, you start to become transported with the music and the lights, yep. and then you're here in front of this gigantic yep. tank. It's very immersive. You literally walk downwards on yeah. a ramp, and then you end up in front of our large shark tank here with all of these beautiful uh, fish that you can find in the oceans around the Florida area. You go around the corner and we have a coral tank that's at a level for kids so they can see it. You can get down on the level with your children. We also have a touch tank with all of our aquatic inverts that people can actually get in there and be completely involved in getting to know how they feel and how they move when you're interacting with them. So I saw one of the sharks in here. Yes. You're actually going to be able to have people like in the zoo, you can actually get inside of here and like yep. teach and talk to students about it. Correct, yeah, our intention is that when we have to do all of our husbandry for the tank, we will be snorkeling inside the tank. Our team will be trained to do that. We'll do shark feeds um, from the upper platform up here so that we can do programming and talk to people about the sharks and about our, our reefs and our oceans that are around the state of Florida. Um, so we'll have a lot of keeper interactions when we're in here. I also love that 
you are learning about the ocean yes. when you're in here and you're learning not just the names of some of these fish and the species, you're learning about the importance of the coral reefs. You're learning about some ways that you as just a human in this world can get along with the sea creatures. Yeah, we really have very thoughtful signage that's all over the exhibit that people can read and learn about. This is another beautiful environment that we're lucky enough here in Florida to exhibit. We're surrounded by the oceans, so it's another thing that we learn about how we impact it, how we benefit from it, and how those things combine together, how we work together to make that all you know coexist. So. The touch tank has to be one of your more popular exhibits, sure. and people can really get up close. I see a lobster in there, yep. a sea cucumber, Correct. Crabs, yep. uh, starfish, yeah, a bunch of different types of inverts. Um, the reality is there is studies that have been done on the fact that somebody can go to a zoo and they can see these beautiful exotic animals, but if they're far away from them, they, they get it, they think it's wonderful, but the second they're able to touch something, the second they can interact with it, it takes that appreciation, that connection to a completely different level, and we're able to provide that here in our ocean, so it's really wonderful. That's what's so beautiful yeah. about the life exhibit is being able to get up close and Absolutely. experience it. All right, so I love the ocean so much. Yep. It's such a calming zen place, but we still have one final place, the rainforest. Correct. So let's head over Sounds to the great. rainforest. Okay. We are now here at last in the rainforest and you can feel that we are in the rainforest. You sure can. And that's the beautiful thing, just like yeah. the ocean, you feel like you're immersed. And this is quite a special place. It is, it's, it offers you a little bit something different than the other two environments. Um, those environments you can find in your backyard, you can go to the ocean, you can go to the swamps here in Florida. The rainforest is something that if you can't find a place like here at the Orlando Science Center, you'd never be able to experience these animals. You get the hot, humid temperatures here in Florida, but not this lush environment and the animals that are in it. It's, it is the immersive rainforest experience. Obviously, we know we've got some company behind us as one of the animals in the exhibit. So tell me a little bit about, let's talk about the birds first, because sure. you've got birds flying overhead. We do. Um, so we have a perch over here where we have our sun conures. This is a mated pair, Rio and Tika. We also have free flighted birds in the exhibit, 15 of them that are roaming the exhibit, flying around, um, going in and out for their food sources. We have a two-toed sloth in the exhibit, red-footed tortoises. Uh, behind us we have a, a waterfall with our cichlids. Um, so a whole bunch of different species that you can come in and they are moving around you completely, no barriers between you and them. That is what's really cool is when you walk in here, first of all, the fact that it is so high and you can hear the birds, yep. you can hear the sounds of the waterfall, you feel yeah. the humidity. You guys have done a great job Thank you. of making people feel as though they are in the rainforest. For sure, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing to experience and to, to see all the animals and again, our interactions with them and, and to be able to sit in here and feel like you're a part of this, this wonderful environment. It's something you won't get to experience in many other places. So the sloth, I know, is one of the stars of the exhibit. They're a very and popular animal, yes, yeah. Um, and for us in general, everybody has a love for Miss Izzy. Um, she does, for the most part, what sloths do. They are nocturnal animals, so she sleeps during the day, gets a little active at times if she's looking for some food or a new place that she wants to sleep in the exhibit. But for the most part, sleeping in her hammock is what she does, and then she's active at night. This is really the showstopper here, isn't it? And you've really taken on quite a lot of challenges in interacting and being able to get all these species in one place. It's not an easy task. It is not. Every single exhibit that you find here at the Science Center is a mixed species exhibit, which means that you have to take an in, into account as an individual species, what are the needs of that animal, but how do those needs affect the next animal, and is that going to negatively impact them? And if it is, you have to make adjustments um, to figure out how they can coexist and all of them have those needs met in a positive way. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of moving pieces that are hard sometimes to figure out. It's, I'm glad you guys have figured it out, but it's also so satisfying to see the people walk in here and really feel transported. Absolutely, and when you see the people come in and how excited they are to be here, how happy they are, you see the little kids getting excited to see animals that they've maybe only seen in pictures. It's something that we've been working for for a really long time, and to see it all come together, it's incredibly rewarding. We're very, very proud of it. Well, you heard it. If you can't experience the rainforest in person off in another continent, you can experience it here at the Orlando Science Center as part of the LIFE exhibit. Yep. Jennifer Voles, thank you so much for joining us, the Animal Care Manager here at the Orlando Science Center. So to check out more information about the LIFE exhibit or the Orlando Science Center in general, you can check out their website at osc.org.
it's really a beautiful exhibit. I'm going to find out firsthand. Oh. I actually have a date that I'm going to go to the Science Center this ah. month. And I'm going to a date, date, or a date. You oh no, I have a date on the calendar oh, that I have I designated we were the scoop. to. Oh please, that I'm <laughs> actually gonna go and see life yeah. and all of the science. You're gonna absolutely love it, yeah. and it is it is stunning, and it's almost like it's a whole different part of the science center to discover mm. when you go there. So you're gonna love it. I can't wait looking to hear. Looking forward, it. looking forward to it. Let's do the time warp again. That's right, head over to the Wayne Dench Performing Arts Center for an evening of Rocky Horror Picture Show fun. The madcap musical mayhem begins when rain-soaked Brad and Janet Weiss take refuge in the castle of a mad scientist, and he is about to unveil his greatest creation and have a little fun with his reluctant guests. Join Tim Curry, Barry Bostwick, Susan Sarandon, and the late rock star Meatloaf in the most popular cult classic of all time. The movie will be shown on November 1st at 9 p.m. Rocky Horror is rated R. No one under the age of 18 will be admitted even with adult supervision. Showing an ID at the door is required, guys. Go to ritztheatersanford.com for tickets and more details. And it's actually Janet Weiss. Oh, thank you. You have to say it like Weiss. that. Even though it is November, it is the perfect time for planting here in Florida. So head over to the 30th Mount Dora Plant and Garden Fair on November 2nd and 3rd from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Donnelly Park in Mount Dora. You'll find over 100 vendors and nurseries from around the state showcasing an array of Florida native and exotic plants, as well as gardenware and crafts. And the best part? Admission is free. For more information, go to mountdoraplantandgardenfair.com. The City of Orlando and Cox Media Group invite you to experience the vibrant creativity of the 53rd Fall Fiesta at Lake Eola. More than 250 original artists and handcrafters will set up to show and sell their wares on November 2nd and 3rd from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Wander around beautiful Lake Eola while exploring unique works of art. Enjoy delicious fresh food from vendors and stop by the beer garden for a cocktail or two. The amphitheater stage will feature live entertainment and families can enjoy the free kid zone, making it a fun-filled day for all. Get more information at fiestainthepark.com. Head over to the Orlando Museum of Art for a fun night of artistic expression at this month's Art Night Out on November 6th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Bring a date or come alone and meet new friends while you work alongside an art teacher to create your own masterpiece. Each exciting night features a different theme, and the class price includes all materials, but space is limited, and pre-registration is required. Go to omart.org for more information and to register. I heard that there's an election happening apparently soon. So <laughs> we have the Orange County Supervisor of Elections, Glenn Gilzine, is here to tell us all about voting in this very important election. Glenn, thanks for being with us. Thank you again for having me. So a lot of people are planning to vote, apparently. So what is the plan for voting day? It is on what day? November the 5th. Okay, Tuesday, November 5th and the hours, let's get that out of the way. It's from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay, so you can go before work if you don't have to be to work before seven. And there are a lot of people. So what should people plan to pre or prepare for once they get to the polls? So Orange County is a very important county, not only in the state of Florida, but across the country. Um, and what we've seen is that with the 1.4 million residents being the fourth largest county, we're larger than like 12 states, mm -hmm. right? Um, and this important election is so important because there's some key races on there. So I've intentionally made the ballot where the first page of the ballot is all candidates. Then the second page we have the state, uh, state amendments. And then the third page is where we get into the county charter amendments. And then the last page we have to remind everyone that that's where the school board referendum is located. So there's a four page ballot. And as you mentioned how important it is to plan, 
is that with this very long ballot, you have to take the time to uh, go over it and be prepared. We've mailed out sample ballots to all of our active voters, over 800,000 plus. And uh, so we want people to be prepared. They plan to vote, like we recently planned out of this uh, a hurricane season, that you be prepared for that opportunity. And we just want you to take the time to be prepared for this very important election cycle. And you mentioned there are four pages, and uh, among those four pages, there are 17 amendments? So there, you have the number of candidates in the front page, and then that's based on where you reside, mm -hmm. right? But then you get into the six state amendments, uh -huh. and then the county charter has 10, and then you have the school board referendum. Ah, so there's a lot. So, if you're one of those people who is voting for the first time, make sure that you bring your ID first and correct. foremost, that right? Correct. Because you'll have to present that. That's correct. If somebody doesn't have a driver's license, because if maybe it's somebody young who's voting for the first time and the kids are not getting their driver's licenses at 16 like we used to, if what would they need to bring? Just a state issued ID. Okay. Yeah, and right. that would that'd be fine. But I do want to go back to the fact that we're like early voting has already uh, is underway, mm -hmm. right? And here in Orange County, uh, under my administration, we expanded early voting. We've added two new sites, one in the town of Eatonville, and then also in West Lakes, um, which is just south of the Camping World Stadium. Mm -hmm. And that is to help combat some of these things that we call a voting desert. But the good thing about these two early uh, additional early voting sites is that anywhere anyone in Orange County to go to any one of those and they can go ahead. So now let's say they have a vote by mail ballot and they don't want to put it in the mail. They should because we cover the postage, unlike other counties where you have to pay for postage. Mm -hmm. We actually cover the postage. Now, um, they could take their ballot, vote by mail ballot as long as they sign it on the back and they can drop it off at any of the 22 early voting sites as well. So in Orange County, we're really blessed because we have given the maximum amount of options to ensure that our residents have an opportunity to cast their vote and let their voice be heard. For the last 15 years, I've gone to the same place, the same voting place, early voting. And during COVID, I actually did the, the mail-in ballot, but I dropped it off because I don't even know if going inside was a thing when I was doing early voting that time. So it, it, there are multiple ways for you to get this done. You don't have to just show up on the day. Correct. But if you're going to show up on the day, pack your patience, of course, because yeah. there are likely going, there will likely be a large line yeah. um, and you're gonna have to spend some time there. And while you're there, make sure that if you're spending time in line, do some homework on your phone so that you know some of these amendments and what's Absolutely. actually going to be on the ballot. Or take advantage of the, the sample ballot that we mail out to you. Right. Right. And again, we're very blessed that in our county, we provide those resources to every active voter in Orange County. So you can do your homework. And more importantly, like when you go and cast your vote, we have the best stickers in the entire state, right? <laughs> like I tell I tell people, hey, our stickers are way better than Seminole County stickers. Give me an orange. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. We're, we're, we got, orange <laughs> County got the best stickers. <laughs> so if you are uh, waiting for the day to vote, it is uh, November 5th, Tuesday, November 5th, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And make sure that you know your polling place, um, you are familiar with um, not just the candidates, but also some of the amendments that are coming as well. Absolutely. And, you know, I'd be remiss, but knowing that early voting is on the way, please take advantage of those 22 early voting sites. I know um, there's a lot of faith-based organizations that do Souls to the Polls. Mm -hmm. They're going to do a National Day of Action that Sunday before, um, which, again, is a, a great opportunity um, to take advantage of those, those, those great opportunities to cast your vote. So, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It is a part of your civic responsibility, so take really? advantage of it. I do want to share one <laughs> thing that we've implemented is that we're working with high schools and we've created the first ever Gen Z polling program. And what it does, it allows high school seniors and juniors to get the necessary um, community service hours in order to get bright futures. So what's really exciting, we're also the first in the state to offer this effort, working with our partners at Orange County Public Schools and then also Valencia College as well, and some of the kids from the, the homeschool um, communities as well, where they are gonna be volunteering their, their time this election cycle in a very important election cycle either as a greeter at the site the day of, or helping us with supply distribution where they're coming and helping making sure that all the supplies are there going forward. 
And that's a really cool initiative because, again, Orange County is the beacon in the state, but also leading the nation in innovation for our community. So I, it's just something that Orange County should be really proud of. And it'll be nice to see those young faces too. Absolutely, really but great. what better way to engage in civic education but actually working in elections. Absolutely. And let this be their first election that they actually worked or even participated in. That's huge. That's huge, and that's why we love Orange County. So anyway, thank you, Glenn, for yes, being here. Thanks for getting us up to speed with our voting. And uh, go to the polls and make your voice heard. The Ritz Theater in Sanford presents the movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles as part of its Ritz Flicks series. The film tells the story of Neil Page, an advertising executive who just wants to fly home to Chicago to spend Thanksgiving with his family. But all Neil gets is misery. Uh, it stars Steve Martin and John Candy, who go on a cross-country wild goose chase that keeps Neil from tasting his turkey. All of the fun takes place on November 7th at 7.30 p.m. For tickets and details, go to RitzTheaterSanford.com. You're never fully dressed without a smile. As Theater South Playhouse presents the musical Annie now until November 17th. Witness the charming tale of a plucky orphan who captures hearts with an infectious optimism and unwavering spirit that will make you believe that the sun will come out tomorrow. Don't miss the chance to experience the magic of Annie. It's a hard knock guarantee that you'll leave with a smile on your face and a song in your heart. Visit theatersouthplayhouse.org for showtimes. Did you resist the urge not to break out into song? Almost. Then? You're never fully <laughs> dressed without a smile. I love that was it. the first Broadway play I ever saw. Then it sticks in I your mind. I think I was it? in the fourth grade. My parents took me and I thank them to this day because Aww. they sat through Annie for me. Oh, but it was my first Broadway play they I ever saw. They did it for you. Yeah, the fourth grade. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Oh, well, that wraps up this week of events. If you have one that you'd like to share with us for next month, send us an email at cafe at ocfl.net. I'm Crystal Candy. And I'm Clarence Reynolds. Remember to join us next week to see what's new and exciting in your community. on Taste of the Town, where we explore beautiful restaurants here in Orlando, all while enjoying their tasty cuisine. Come with me to visit Helena Modern Riviera so you too can enjoy your Taste of the Town. Come on, let's go. Welcome to Taste of the Town. I'm your host, Carissa Clark. We are in Icon Park at Helena Modern Riviera, and I have the pleasure of introducing you to their executive chef, Chef Alex. Alex, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. So please tell us, what do you have here for everyone to be able to make to impress the ones that they love? Uh, well, this is our uh, arancinis. Uh, there's a vegetarian dish. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, it has uh, arborio rice. Um, this is our take on a croqueta, which is a, a Spanish dish, which is used with potatoes, breading, ham, and things of the like, or whatever mixture you might want to put in it. Okay. Uh, but instead of the potato, we're using arborio rice. It's more of a Sicilian-inspired dish. Ooh, I love that. Uh, All right. And if you know how to cook rice, you can probably cook the arborio. It's just you know, whatever package you get, you can probably just read the uh, measurements and cook it to order. Okay. Uh, this one we cook a little bit over so we can have some uh, malleability that you can play with it. Sticky? Yes, basically. That's want, what it is. We want it sticky. Right. Okay, and then I can it, do that. It has uh, some garlic, Yum. some shallots, Great. some mushrooms. Love that. And what we do is we saute the shallots and garlic. We add the rice in there. Oh my goodness. Mix it around, toasty, nice and toasty. Uh, deglaze with a little bit of white wine. Oh, yeah. Then you add your mushrooms. Okay. And your vegetable stock. If you want to do vegetable stock, you can do any kind of stock, chicken stock, whatever you want to do to impart flavor to it. That's okay. up to you. Okay. Um, then once it's done, what we have is our finished product here. 
Okay. Which is a nice little doughy kind of ball. Okay. And what we do is we take it. This is about a uh, two ounce serving here. Okay. And we take it, just mash it up. It's nice and sticky. Right. Roll it up like if you were making a meatball. And this chef, if mm -hmm. I may um, just kind of chime in, again, I'm a mother. I invite the ones that I love into the kitchen. I think it's such a special time to be able to include those that you love so that they can learn and grow and make these memories. I know, Chef, you were telling me that you were invited into the kitchen. Yes. By your grandmother, your mother? Um, my inspiration comes from my mother, my grandmother, and my aunt. Mm -hmm. um, it was a point where back in the early 80s and my younger years, uh, everybody was into the microwaves and microwave food and I just couldn't stand it. They're not as good as they are now. Uh, so I asked, you know, got on the phone or went to the house and they just, I just told them, teach me how to cook. Teach and, them how to cook. And that's what they did and I've been, you know, that was my passion ever since. Isn't that amazing though? It's that, it's that classic, just give our children the tools and Correct. they can create. Mm -hmm. and to allow children to participate because they also will eat the food once they've created it. Mm -hmm. But I know it just sounds like too, when he was telling me that story initially, it was, it's just such a fond memory for him. And there's no regrets, I mean, because no. look at where he is now. That's right. Just very inspiring. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. So we have a sticky ball of wonderfulness. Yes. Okay. So we dredge it, if you feel the term with the dredge, if you made fried chicken or anything like that. Okay. You know, get the excess off. A Little bit of egg wash. Okay. You know, then you put it in uh, your panko or whatever breadcrumbs you like. You can get the Italian breadcrumbs, just whatever. Uh, make sure you season everything. You know, the, the flavors are in all the ingredients, mm -hmm. a little salt, pepper, whatever you want, the eggs and the, uh, the breadcrumbs as well. Don't leave anything out. Okay. Right. And what you got there, nice and breaded. Okay. And that's what you end up with. That is so easy. And this goes into the oven? Uh, no, this is, uh, you fry it. Uh, oh, nice. Fried goodness, yes. You fry it 350 Yum. degrees until it's nice oh, and Oh, the kids are going to love it if it's fried. Mm -hmm. This is perfect. And it's so nutritious and flavorful. And it's a great way to teach children to really open up their palate and get excited about food. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited to have a bite. So I shall do that very, very quickly. Chef, I am very excited to do this mm -hmm. because, oh, and I'm going to dip it right here. Yeah, this is our, it's an aioli, we call it the roulette. Mm. Uh, mm. The uh, ingredients are, are listed, so you guys can make okay. this at home. That is wonderful. That is so tasty. I love it. Thank you, Chef. You're welcome. Please go to the website for more details. Please come to Icon Park at Helena Modern Riviera for your taste of the town. Until then, I'll see you around town.